Welcome to Olive Tree Community Spokane. The following recording is from our Boker Shabbat or Sabbath morning teaching. Let's join Pastor Joe Gonzalez as he begins teaching from the scriptures. The Father will be protecting Israel. Yes. And uh, one of the things that uh, <clears throat> I remember last one of the times I was in Israel, I never got it. It was a just a silly t-shirt, but it wasn't silly. It said, uh, you know, something to the effect of um, pray for uh, you know, the United States because uh, Israel is already protecting, uh, God is already protecting Israel. In that nature. And uh, so that is the reality of it. We, we need to see that he has always said that he will watch over his people and uh, so we we are grieving i know it's going to it's a very difficult time and yet as i said we always see that there is a sense of joy and uh, sorrow uh, during these days um, as we yearly remember the the days that he's asked us to uh, set forth on our calendar and the fact that we need to see that we've had a season of introspection, a time of um, truly seeking him. It's always good to have that. Um, you know, the some people, not all people, but some people have uh, made Lent, which I've confused with Lent. But anyway, it's, a, it's not a biblical uh, holiday at all. And yet they tried to <laughs> sort of copy what the Torah has to say. They don't do a very good job copying. And it's it's very unfortunate because if we would only follow what the Torah has to say, we would be that much further ahead in the things that we need to be doing. <clears throat> but suffice it to say that on uh, this day, uh, this day of uh, we are to be rejoicing because we do know that the culmination of all things is uh, <clears throat> taking place even before our eyes. And I, I know that as we discuss, you know, for over 2000 years now, uh, these kinds of things have been discussed. But the most important thing is that every day we are to seek his face. We are to consider what the psalmist uh, said, uh, David, to have him seek uh, uh, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to seek our hearts and see if there's any evil way within us and to have him to remove that um, by his His wonderful love. And I, I think to myself that on uh, this day, this... Uh, a day of, uh, again, re rejoicing, uh, we know that the Father has called you and me to uh, remember him and to glorify him and to thank him for this time. It's, it says, uh, that uh, for seven days uh, here in the Leviticus, uh, for seven days you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation and present an offering by fire to the Lord. It is an assembly. You shall do no laborious work. Now listen, you know, when we present this offering, and you know well that in Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. And we know that the fire is the fire of a, of the Ruach HaKodesh that burns within us, that cleanses us, that, that inspires us, that gives us the power and the strength to do the things that we're asked to do. We cannot do it on our own strength. If you're trying to do it in your own strength, you won't be able to accomplish it. We must have the, the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit to be able to do the things that he's asking us to do. And of course, some of us uh, are understanding that during this time, that we are to remember those who have gone before us. And, uh, you know, you stop and think really that we all may be gone before we know it. Life is just a smoke, right? It's just a vapor. It's here for a moment and it disappears. But we're speaking about eternal things when we speak of the things that the scripture has to, to say. So, the eighth day caps off and concludes the seven days of Sukkot, the, the festival that we have just uh, partaken. I thank uh, those that were able to go and thank you 
for having Asuka here this year. I'm sorry that we were not able to be here. Thank you for your prayers as we were going through a little issue in our own lives. Uh, in the messianic sense, it represents a day when the drama of redemption will be finally complete. The number eight has a quality that it uh, falls outside of the regular time. Ordinarily, the week contains seven days, not an eighth, but likewise, the festival of Sukkot lasts seven days, and the Torah speaks of an eighth day. The eighth day does not fit into the regular time stream. Even the shape of the Arabic numeral eight symbolizes affinity. Yes. Uh, the thing is, uh, my email is Pastor Joe 888, and the reason why I did 888 was because 777 was taken. <laughs> But then I realized that there's a sign of eternity. So I said, well, that's a good thing. So I didn't do it on purpose, but the father gave it to me, I believe, to remind me. And even the uh, that shape of the eight symbolizes infinity. <clears throat> if the seven days of Sukkot represent the Messianic era, the eighth day represents, I believe, the world to come. And so we are seeing that the, the that is taking place when giving rest to all things the Lord says, I shall make a new beginning on the eighth day that is the beginning of another world. This explains why we also keep the eighth day with joy as the day also on which the Mashiach rose and we celebrate his resurrection. And uh, actually, that's from, uh, you'll be happy to see uh, someone who has always told me about from the Epistle, Epistle of Barnabas, which obviously is uh, um, outside of the scripture, but it is interesting. So it we, we need to see that according to the Jewish source and early Jewish believers in Yeshua celebrate the circumcision of the master on the eighth day after the festival of Sukkot, because he was then circumcised as the scripture day says in Luke 2.21, when eight days had passed before his circumcision, his name was then called Yeshua, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. That's in uh, Luke 2.21. And it, it, it harkens back to the importance of understanding that in, in Yeshua, it, it, again, it all revolves around him. You know, one of the things that I, I truly enjoy in, uh, in, in the ministry of, of uh, Saul, and that is uh, Paul, uh, he stated here uh, in uh, Corinthians, where he's speaking to a group of people who have all kinds of problems because he said to them, and, and I think to myself, we have all kinds of problems, don't we? And it says, I urge you, brothers, in the first chapter of Corinthians, I urge you, brothers and sisters, through the name of our Lord Yeshua, the Mashiach, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you. That's an incredible thing because... Uh, that's what was his desire back then. And there was all kinds of issues and problems. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of issues and problems today, not only in what the body overall of uh, people who are believers, but even in uh, messianic groups. I mean, listen, there are problems. And we focus in on the, the things that we don't agree with sometimes more than we focus on the things that we do agree with. And if we focus more on the things we disagree with, we're not going to be able to get along together. And the whole season that we just spent is all about seeking his face and seeking his desire to know what he wants us to do. And we all say we want to do the Torah, but then uh, again, the apostle here says that people were saying things like, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Kepha, or I follow this Messianic rabbi, I follow that Messianic rabbi, I follow this guy, I follow that guy, I follow this teaching, I follow that teaching. And we say, why are we standing up for the real truth of what he wants us to do? Because we are majoring on the minors and missing the majors. The major thing is, how do we relate to our Savior? How do we relate to the one who's called us, who's created us? How do we relate these things in our lives so that we can actually do something within the communities and where we're in? So that we can speak about the things that are of importance. 
I heard this one program where they, uh, you know, they they saying that uh, messianism or messianics, are, uh, there, there's no central authority. Well, I, I venture to differ with them. Our authorities in the Torah are authorities in the scripture, but they don't see the same thing we do. And they are talking about somehow or other trying to pigeonhole people. And that's a bad thing. But yet I can understand what they're saying because we are so divided. We don't communicate. Not once. Me. Not once. Although that's not true. Actually, I have always desired to bring rabbi, Messianic rabbis together to talk. Here in this area, I didn't have a chance to, but no one ever called me. We're divided. I've had more pastors talk to me about these things, and I've had brothers who would consider themselves messianics. He says here that they're divided, and I thank God that I have num I immersed none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one should say that I had immersed you in my own to my own name. That was the problem. I'm immersed in that rabbi, in that messianic teacher, and there are some messianic teachers that I truly enjoy and am blessed by. We've had them here. We will have others. I have no problem sharing what this known as the pulpit is, is open to people to discuss and to share and, and bring about an understanding of the truth of the word. But my brothers, we, we and sisters, we need to understand that we have closed ourselves off to the world because we've closed ourselves off to each other. And yet we've gone through a season where we saw nothing but saying, bring us together, bring me together, bring me close to you, and then we stay apart because of where we stand. Now, listen, if there are things that are not of, uh, totally unscriptural, I understand that. I mean, I don't want to go to a place where uh, the word is not lifted up, where the uh, Yeshua is not glorified. That's understandable. But I believe that we can come together in these things and he says here, let me just tell you that, let me tell you what Paul wanted to say, which I, I long to say. He talks to the people here in the second chapter. He says, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come with excellence of speech. Some people say, you know, you don't say the words right. You don't say it the way you're supposed to say it. You don't do it the way you're supposed to do it. When I came to you, brothers, and sisters, I did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom. Of speech proclaiming to you or wisdom proclaiming to you the mysteries of God. I, I, I didn't come that way. He says, for I decided not to know about anything among you except the blood wounds and what they mean to you. No. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. That we are supposed, you know, in other words, I could just make a list of things. You know what I'm talking about. Here it says, I decided not to know about anything except Yeshua, the Messiah, and him crucified. That was it. Now, I, I understand you. I grant you the fact that he was speaking to Jewish believers who understood, who knew what was going on. And that's one of the things that I enjoyed about being in Israel when I went to Messianic Jews and I told them about the problems we have here in the United States. And they said, oh, hey, we're all Jews. We know what's going on. I'm not trying to be Jewish. I'm trying to follow the Mashiach. There's no problem with honoring the people of God. But I want you to know that my rabbi is Yeshua. He's the one who died, bled, buried, rose again from the dead. And truly, this time of Sukkot is to remember to me what Yohanan said in John chapter 1. Because it brings about the culmination of the beginning of the fulfillment of all things. When it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word, that is the very words, the very essence of the Torah, the living Torah became flesh and dwelt among us. 
Someone just asked me today, have you danced with the Torah? I danced with Mashiach. <laughs> he is the Torah. I, I, I've done the I've done that. I'm not dancing, but I've walked uh, with the Torah. It's a time of rejoicing. It's annoying that we can restart our uh, cycle of remembering uh, the things that he has talked to us and known to, has shown us, and we need to do these things in accordance to what the Moedim in Leviticus 23 has to say. But my brothers, we need to see that each day that we talk about remembering that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he's not here just for a season, but he's here at all times. He says, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. As he spoke to his disciples as he ascended into heaven. And we looked upon his glory. Can you imagine that? That they looked upon his glory? Listen, just like Moses looked upon the glory of Adonai, we now can see the glory in the word and in who he is and what he has done and what he's doing in our lives. And what we long to do is to come together to be able to make a difference in this world. We hear I hear people all the time telling me, how come people aren't changing? It's the fault of, of, of all people who call upon them in the name of Yeshua. And they call themselves by that name because we're not doing it. We're infighting. We're talking about various things. We're not preaching. We're not teaching what it says, where he says, I long to to do nothing but to preach him crucified and resurrected from the dead. Because if that's not at our core, we won't understand the Torah. If we don't understand the Torah, we won't understand the death and burial and resurrection. It works hand in hand as one. It is one. The word is one. And Yeshua longed to bring about a unity within his followers. Here they had this unity at the very beginning. We have this unity today. And we're wondering why there's a problem that we find in the world today. Why do we have the problems that we have in Spokane? Because we don't speak. We don't share. We don't work together for the glory of his name. And yet we seek him and we pray and we fast and we say, Lord God, do something. Do something in me. But, then, then, but no, not with them. With, not with them, not with them. So who are we going to do it with? We do it with ourselves. Just me, me, myself, and I, we're in agreement together. Sometimes we're happy. Yeah, sometimes we don't even agree with ourselves, right? I'm saying, when you think of the season we went through and the end of this time and the time of culmination and rejoicing, we should desire to follow the entire word and that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we looked upon his glory, the glory of the one and only from the father, full of grace and truth. I love what it says here in my version and uh, here, this version that I have where it says, Torah was given through Moses. Grace and truth was realized and came through Yeshua Mashiach. I, I want you to understand, first of all, the Torah was given through Moses. It was Abba Father who gave the Torah. Moses simply was... Uh, a righteous man. He was a wonderful man. He was the most humble man, he said, but I want you to know that it's Moses' word. We gave, and it came through Moses, and we realize the grace and truth through all that the Torah has to say, because there is grace and truth in the Torah, not just in Yeshua. Because Yeshua is the Torah, the Torah is Yeshua. Now, no one has ever seen God, but the one and only God, or Jehovah God, Yah, and the Father's embrace has known him to not. He, we understand who the Father is only through Yeshua, only through Yeshua, only through, that was, that's the issue that people had, that's the rub. 
You believe in Yeshua, you have Meshugana. May I be more Meshugana for him. So on this time, this day, we pray for Israel. May we pray for ourselves as we look back in our lives this year, as we look ahead to the year to come, whatever days he's given us to come, may we each day realize that he has become flesh and he moved into the neighborhood. And he lives among us today. And we don't realize him because we haven't fixed our spiritual antennas to pick up his word. Remember the days when you used to have rabbit ears on televisions? Some of you don't look at me like I'm crazy. You had to put the rabbit ears up. You had to adjust it to get, get the, oh no, it's still fuzzy. Art link letter is not right. Yeah, aluminum foil, put the, put the aluminum foil. You got you to gotta adjust it. You see, some people say God doesn't exist because I don't see him, I don't sense him, I don't hear him. You don't have the antenna up to receive that which is there. If you open your heart to the Spirit, your eyes will be opened. Read the Word, and He will fill you with His presence. Call upon His name, and He will do a work in you. So may this culmination of these days that we celebrated be a reality and become crystal clear because we have raised our hands towards the heavens and said, Father, fill us with the Mashiach and the presence that the word has become flesh and dwelt among us and that he's ascended back into heaven. And yet the understanding of your word comes through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit of the living God. Father, we thank and we praise you for this time together. We pray that you do a work in us for your glory and for your honor. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining Olive Tree Community Spokane for today's message. Join us for 24-7 Messianic music and teaching just like this on Messianic Joy Radio. Go to live365.com or download the app Live 365 and search for Messianic Joy. Shalom. From Olive Tree Community, Spokane.